Good morning, my friends. Good morning, and welcome, welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. My name's Mike McIntyre. I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad that you can be with us, whether you are joining us here live or at home through live stream. We're glad to be together in the name of Jesus Christ. Today's a very, very fun day. Our pathways of discipleship, of worship, learn, serve, and celebrate that we've been looking at um, culminate this week in our very last one. One, which is celebrate, because what we're going to see is that God gave us this beautiful, beautiful gift called life. And whoever thought that Christians are supposed to be somber and, and sad never met Jesus, because Jesus celebrated life to the full and gave us each other, gave us friends to help us to truly celebrate the goodness that is life. So I'm glad that you are with us as we could celebrate this. What you're going to find is our, our music you know, I challenge you to not enjoy our music today. I challenge you to not have your, your foot tapping because uh, we, are, we are truly celebrating the goodness of life that God has given to us. Now, last week, if you remember, we looked at mission uh, and how important serve was in the life of a disciple. So we have a mission fair going on right now. So those of you who are here live can leave immediately as soon as this worship service is over and go over to room 3233 and the mission fair will be taking place. So I invite you to do that to find out how you can be a part of the mission uh, ministries of Wesley. Now, friends, uh, I want to uh, thank every single one of you for coming. Those of you at home, I'm going to invite you to let us know you're here through um, our um, our website. Sorry, uh, hard word. Our website, you can go in and you can register your friendship there. Those of you here, you have two options to register, and that is you can scan the QR code in front of you on the back of the pew, or you can find one of the cards in the pew pocket, fill that out, and then later in the service when the ushers come forward, you can simply put that card in the plate. We would appreciate it very much. We want to be able to give you the care that we think you deserve, and registering your attendance help, uh, helps us to do that. Also, if you are here and this is your first time with us, we just want to be able to give you a gift of, of a, a nice travel mug to say thanks. We're glad you're here. We'd love to have you come back. So after the service, simply go out into our narthex. You'll find a white desk there with one of our wonderful hospitality team members, and they will give you that, that mug. It is good to have you with us. It is good to be together. It's good to be a part of the church that is doing so much for the kingdom of God. So a lot's going on, and to find out more, I invite you to take a look at this. Happy Sunday, Wesley Church and visitors. We're so excited that you're joining us this week for worship. If you don't know me, my name is Elise Peck and I get to serve here at Wesley as the communications coordinator. We have a really exciting morning happening here at Wesley with our worship services and our mission fair. From 9 to 11 this morning, you can hear from several of our mission partners and learn how you can be involved. And if you can't make it this morning, no worries. Feel free to connect with Pastor Megan and she can help you get in contact with the organization that you wish to lend a hand to. And don't forget, this is the final week to drop off donations for Ozarks Food Harvest. Donations can be dropped off in the gathering area this morning or throughout the week. And mark your calendars for October 9th and 10th. The United Methodist Men of Wesley Church are teaming up with Nick LaFaro for a barbecue fundraiser. And like I said last week, if you haven't gotten to experience what Nick can do with a smoker, believe me, you don't want to miss this one. Plus, 100% of the proceeds from this fundraiser will go towards the United Methodist Men Youth Scholarship. So it's a win-win, great barbecue and helping a great cause. And to plan for proper quantities and to ensure your, your order is ready for pickup, you will need to pre-order in advance. So here's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can order via PayPal or Venmo, or you can email Nick and let him know that you'll be paying with cash or check. All of his contact information can be found on the screen or through the event on our website and Facebook. The pickup for Saturday is at 6 p.m. or if you prefer to pick up on Sunday, they will be passing it out after the 11 a.m. worship services. If you have any questions, feel free to contact Marion Coons, Nick LaFaro, or the church office. And save the date for Wesley Kids Fall Festival and Trunk or Treat on Wednesday, October 27th from 6 to 7.30. 
We are in need for volunteers to help plan, prepare, and execute this exciting event. So if you're able to help out, help out check out the signups in the Connect counter in the gathering area or at wesleymethodist.com slash events. And many of you know Pastor Gary Griffin, and some of you have had the privilege of working with him through our prayer group ministry or our Sunday school classes that he leads. But you may not know one of the vital ministries that he gets to work with and lead here at Wesley. So here this morning is Pastor Gary himself to share about the homebound ministry that we have and how you can help. Good morning. I'm Pastor Gary, and my main ministry here at Wesley is to visit the homebound. And I would like for you to be a part of this very important ministry. I would like to invite you to make a visit or to phone on the telephone or to send a card to those members of our church who have been long-term members but are no longer able to come and worship with you. I will be out in the gathering area and I would love to have you come and I would share with you. And most of all, I want you to know that the homebound will be thrilled to hear about your love for them and that they have not been forgotten by their church. And I can tell you that you will be blessed by showing your love to those who are there and confined to their homes and care facilities. See you after worship in the gathering area. Thank you, Pastor Gary. We appreciate all you do and all of the volunteers that we have that help with this vital ministry. If you want to be part, remember you can contact Pastor Gary. He'll be in the gathering area this morning. Today is the fourth and final week of our series of the pathways of discipleship that we follow as a church community. So far, we've talked about the pathways, worship, learn, serve, and that means today is celebrate. Remember, you can join us in person on Sunday mornings for traditional worship at 8.15, 9.30, or 11 a.m., or for modern worship at 11 a.m. Or if you're worshiping from home, you can tune in at 9.30 or 11, or on demand any time after that. Thanks for catching up with this week's Wesley Word. We're so happy that you're here. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. I invite you to rise and join with me now in our call to worship. 
The Holy One of Israel is here in this community of faith. Great is our God and greatly to be praised. Let us bless His holy name now and forever. Great is our God and greatly to be praised. Let us meditate God's wondrous works. Great is our God, and greatly to be praised. Let us celebrate God's goodness and love. Great is our God, and greatly to be praised. Seated. You're in for a treat this morning. We've already been blessed by our instrumental ensemble. I want to point out that the... Uh, arrangement that you heard was arranged by our own Bob Holden, who's a member here and has been for years, so great job to them, and now it's time for the choir to sing, so we won't be offended if you clap your hands, if you stomp your feet, we won't even be offended if you shout something, so let's go, or... <laughs> Friends, I'm going to invite you to join with me now in a time of prayer. Holy God, we come before you as a people who are so deeply grateful for all the blessings that you just pour forth down upon us each and every single day. In fact, we have to admit, Lord, that you bless us so much that we don't even really notice all of the blessings, let alone truly celebrate them. And so, Lord, we, we just want to take this time right now to just let you know how much we love you, how much we appreciate your grace, your patience, all of the material things that you shower down upon us to give us health and wholeness. We want to thank you, Lord, for this beautiful world that you gave us, and we want to thank you for the fact that you didn't have to make this world beautiful in order for it to sustain life, but you chose to do that to make life better for us. You did not have to make food taste good in order for it to sustain our life, but you chose to do that because you want us to enjoy life and to celebrate it. You did not have to make flowers smell good in order for them to be able to be used to pollinate your world, but you chose to do that because you want us to celebrate life. And you didn't have to make us 
in your image, to be able to love and to be loved and to offer help to one another, but you chose to do that because you want us to know the fullness and the wholeness that is only possible in sharing relationships of love. And so for all these things, Lord, we just want to say thank you. You are so beautiful. And how majestic is your name. Lord, we do want to lift up to you the people who are hurting this day in so many different ways. Let us be your church. Let us reach out and allow them to know that they matter. And we pray for your Holy Spirit to come upon them and those who mourn that you would grant peace, those who are sick that you would bring healing. For those who are divided, we ask that you bring reconciliation. And for all of us, Lord, we just pray for your presence, your grace that takes away our brokenness because, Lord, we have said some things we shouldn't have said. We've done some things we shouldn't have done. And we've broken our lives in the process and hurt other people in the process. And so we just ask for your healing grace and allow us to not just be forgiven, but let us go beyond forgiveness to redemption so that our lives may reflect your glory and we can allow others to see Jesus in us, that our very lives may lift up his name on high. And so, Lord, we, we thank you for all these gifts, but we thank you most of all for the gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we ask that you would hear us now as together we lift up to you the prayer he taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As I should say that you are able, we're going to go into the days of singing with There's Within My Heart a Melody. If you're joining us from uh, your homes, from online, sing loud, make the neighbors wonder what's going on.
Friends, I'd invite you to remain standing and join with me in the historic creed of the church known as the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Deep, intimate friendship. People sing songs about it all the time. We write poems about it. Most of our good books are all about it. And we all of us long for it. And we have this aching emptiness in our lives when we don't have it. And if you think about it, quite often movies that are supposedly about something else like crime or war or adventure are in reality actually about the friendships of the characters, right? Like the relationship between Danny Glover and Mel Gibson's characters in the Lethal Weapon series. And the friendships that the hobbits shared, especially that of Frodo and Samwise Gamgee and the Lord of the Rings trilogies. And friends, what are some of the most popular TV shows of all time? Cheers, where everyone knows your name, and they're always glad you came. Friends, with its theme song, I'll Be There For You. Seinfeld with the crazy friendship of Jerry, Elaine, Elaine, George, and Kramer. Big Bang Theory, with the friendship of Sheldon and Penny, Leonard, Howard, and Raj. And then look at the shows that are the most popular shows today, like the friendship that you see in the Diamond Dogs between Ted and Coach Beard and Nate and Higgins and Ted Lasso, and the friendship between Charles, Oliver, and Mabel in Only Murders in the Building. You see, all of these things are really about and celebrating friendships, celebrating this good gift that God has given to us. Now, if all of this is true, if we all want and we all celebrate good, solid, intimate friendships, if we all recognize how important they are, then friends, why are we still so lonely? Why are we still feeling so isolated in life? Why do we actually have so few true, deep, intimate friends in our lives. People that we can honestly talk about anything with. People who know us intimately. People that we can trust. People that we know have our back. People that will support us no matter what we're going through. Why do we have so few people like that in our lives? I think for starters, friends, honestly, it's because real friendships, real friendships like that, friendships that go way deeper than just surface level, are very difficult. They really are. Because real, deep, intimate friendships like that, they demand 
intentional, sustained effort on our part and the part of our friends, and they require that we make sacrifices and that we take risks. Because you know what I'm talking about. Deep, true friendships can be messy. They can be painful. They can even be embarrassing. You know, one of the most powerful things that is holding us back from having more true, deep friendships is fear. It's flat out fear. Because even though we want to have friends like this, so often we are much too afraid to form those kinds of friendships. You see, we fear those kinds of friendships. We fear letting people get too close to us because we recognize that to do that, we make ourselves very vulnerable. And we're afraid any time we get vulnerable. We're afraid that our friend might ask too much of us. We're afraid that our friend may not like us when they get to know the real us behind the mask that we wear in public. We are so afraid that our friend might take advantage of us and they might even hurt us. And you know, we fear this with good reason because they might. They might. Because the truth is, friends, the more deeply that people know you, the more deeply they can hurt you. There are few things more painful in life, more disheartening than being hurt by someone you considered to be your close friend. Think about it. Who do we all consider to be the greatest villains of all time? The baddest bad guys there are. They're all people who betrayed close friends, right? Who are the greatest villains? Judas, Brutus, Benedict Arnold. Forming friendships is hard. And it's made more difficult by the hectic pace that we all live in. We don't mean for this to happen, but it just does. The, the world and our over-busy schedule just kind of tends to, to pull us apart from other people rather than draw us together, right? Because we're running from work to go get our kids to take them to baseball practice, to go back to work, to go to a meeting at church, to then go to the grocery store, pick up something to eat so that you can go home and microwave it and wolf it down while you're getting on the computer to finish the things that you didn't get done at work. And we don't even know who our neighbors are and our relatives live halfway across the country and at night, we all tend to retreat to our castle and pull up the drawbridge. And that was before we were all isolated through the pandemic. Now, you put all of these things together and little wonder. It's so difficult to have truly deep, intimate friends. And you know, a third obstacle to forming true friendships is electronics, right? Networking sites such as Facebook, WhatsApp, Bebo, Black Planet, and Habbo have radically changed our understanding of what friendship actually is. According to Facebook, the average Facebook user has 130 friends on the site, and millions and millions more have way more than 130. And of course, we all know, we all know that social media friendship is not the same thing as a true, real friendship. We all know that. Social media friendships do not confer on us any of the obligations that we might associate with friendship, right? If you and I are Facebook friends, 
We don't need to know anything about each other. We don't need to be there for each other. We don't even have to care about each other. We might never even lay eyes on each other in real life. And by the same token, Facebook friendship does not confer any of the real joys of friendship either, right? Like sharing a cup of coffee with each other and just be, no agenda, just being together, enjoying each other's company. Joys like sharing wonderful events in life together and being there for each other in not so wonderful events in life. On networking sites, the concept of friendship is really kind of watered down, right? When we say friends, what we're really meaning is bare basic human interaction. So this morning, I, I want to persuade you that in spite of all the difficulties we've just talked about, in spite of all that, building true, intimate, real friendships is worth any risk of being hurt, and it's worth all the investment that we have to put into. In fact, what I'm hoping that you will see by the end of this morning is that friendships, real, true, deep, intimate friendships, is actually part of God's plan for you. It's God's will for you and for me and for all people to have true friends for us. That's why we are going to celebrate this good gift called friendship and celebrate the fact that God gives us friends because you know and I know even at its best, even at its best, life can be very, very hard. And if we want to know the true joy and if we want to know the true fulfillment in life that God created us to have, that God longs for us to have, then we need friends. And I mean that truly, like we need air and we need food. We need friends. You and I and every human being on this planet need to have deep, intimate friendships because it is in these relationships of love that God makes us whole, truly whole. Friends are God's gift to you. Friends are God's gift to you to support you, to encourage you, to help you, to strengthen you. There can be no doubt at all. There is strength in numbers. The Bible tells us that. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. See, friends, we need each other. That's part of God's plan. We need, truly need, friends to help us when we fall. Because make no mistake at all, friends, we all will fall. We all will fall. Eventually, something's going to knock us off our feet. And if we don't have friends there to help us back up, we're not going to have the strength to get up on our own. No matter how self-reliant, no matter how competent, no matter how capable you may be, you are not invulnerable. You are not all-knowing. And you are not all powerful. Sooner or later, something is going to knock you down and it's going to keep you down. It might be the death of a spouse or another loved one. 
It might be a severe career setback, a debilitating health problem. There are a thousand and one things that can knock you off your feet in life. And there's no way, friends, none, that you can protect yourself from all of them. The only guarantee that we have in life is that one day or another, something's going to come along and it's going to rock us to the core. And if we are alone, if we have no friends there, whether our friends are family or whether our friends are not related to us, it makes no difference. If we don't have friends there to help us back up, we may never get back up again. Because on our own, we just don't have the resources to overcome. So please listen to me, friends. That's exactly, exactly why God gave us to each other. And that's exactly why God hardwired you and me to need relationships. Because God knew how hard life was going to be. God knew how difficult it was going to be to navigate on our own. So God said, I love you way too much to let you be out there on your own. I love you way too much to, to ask you to fend for yourself. So I'm making you to need one another because I want you to have each other. I want you to have that strength to be able to keep going when life does get hard. See, God literally hardwired you and me to need relationships the way we need oxygen, the way we need food. It's literally in our DNA. God made different animals to live differently. God made animals like tigers to live solitary lives on their own. God made some animals like wolves to be pack animals where they need each other. And friends, God made us pack animals. Human beings are pack animals. We need the strength of each other. And so by God's design, you have the strength you need through your friends to walk when times get tough to keep going through the darkness when you can't see your way. You're going to have friends who are going to be able to encourage you and help you and remind you of God's goodness and love by actually embodying that love and grace and bringing it into your life. The great Jackie Robinson, as most of you know, was the first African-American to ever play Major League Baseball. In 1947, while breaking baseball's color barrier, Jackie faced quite literally obscene, vile hatred and racism in every stadium he went to, even his own. Many of the Brooklyn Dodgers, his own team, threatened to boycott and refused to play if Jackie was allowed to be on their team. Many of the players of other teams threatened to boycott and refused to play if Jackie was allowed to set foot on the field. It was a brutal, even terrifying situation for him. He got death threats everywhere he went. Well, one day when he was playing in his own home stadium, Old Ebbets Field in Brooklyn, Jackie committed an error. And his own fans let him have it. The hatred and the racial slurs were coming down on him like a hammer. And he just stood there at second base with his head hanging down. Too humiliated to even look up. All the while the hatred just cascaded down upon him. And it was then that his friend and his teammate, shortstop Pee Wee Reese, walked over to him. And Pee Wee put his arm around Jackie's shoulder. And then Pee Wee stared down the crowd with his arm around his buddy Jackie. He just stared down the crowd. And as he stood there staring, the hatred got quieter and quieter 
and quieter until the place was silent. Jackie later said that Pee Wee's friendship and that arm around his shoulder literally saved his baseball career. See, friends, even at its best, life can be so very, very hard. And that's why we need friends all the time, and not just when there's an ambulance in our driveway. And now the second reason that we need friends is really the flip side of the first reason. And that is just like you need friends to be there to help you, everybody else also needs people like you to be there for them, to help them up, to give them the strength they need to overcome the things that come our way. Our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, modeled for us the kind of life that brings glory to God. He modeled for us the kind of life that draws us close to God. He modeled for us a life lived in deep intimacy and friendship with other people. And he taught us the value of that. For the Bible tells us, carry each other's burdens And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. And the Bible says, each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. But friends, you know and I know that for the most part, People who are hurting are not going to let you into their life in any significant way unless they trust you. They're just not. And in order for that trust to develop, they have to know you. They have to share life with you. Think about it. How can you carry someone's burdens if you don't know them well enough to know what those burdens are? How can you put someone else's interests ahead of your own if you don't know what their best interests really are? How can you encourage someone if you don't know what's discouraging them? How can you build them up if you don't know what's tearing them down? You can't. It's as simple. You cannot consistently do any of these things without a foundation of friendship. Because you won't know how, and even if you figure it out, they're not going to let you unless they trust you. And so, friends, let me invite you to turn your attention, truly right now, just turn your full undivided attention to Jesus Just think about everything you know about Jesus, how he lived life, how he treated people. Because what we'll discover is that Jesus is the one who shows us what friendship really looks like. And Jesus is the one who supplies us to have the strength to be able to do everything we've been talking about. You see, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus shares with us the courage to overcome our fears and allow others into our lives. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus gives us the courage to choose relationship, to choose friendship over fear. And... Jesus Christ gives us the power and the strength to be able to reach out to others and to help them and to share their burdens and to give them the strength that they need. And Jesus can do all these things because he's already done them for us and he continues to do them for us and he will continue to do them for us for all eternity. You see, Jesus 
You know this. He's the greatest friend we could ever have, the greatest friend we ever will have. He gave his life for us. He gave his life to save us from the hurts of life. He gave his life to save us from the hurts of sin and the brokenness of death. He gave his life in order that our relationship with God that we broke through our sin would be restored to wholeness and that we would be able to celebrate life not just after we die but right here and right now. And so I encourage each person here trust Jesus enough to believe that he will give you the strength to let your guard down and let others into your life. Trust Jesus enough to know that he will give you the strength and the compassion that you need to be able to reach out to someone else and help them to be made whole. Because, friends, life is hard, but life was made to celebrate And friends allow us to do just that. Friends allow us to celebrate this good and holy gift called life. There's strength in numbers. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Let us thank God for this glorious gift called friends. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, friends, one of the reasons that God asks us to be people of generosity is because of what we were just saying. There's people who have been knocked off their feet. There are people who are in desperate need. And God says, I want my people to be there for them. And that's one of the most important things that we can do is to reach out in love and generosity to help others who are hurting so bad this day. Let us do that as the ushers come forward to collect our gifts and tithes and offerings.
God, you call us to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, we seek to focus on you as our highest priority. We celebrate the richness of your love by returning to you a portion of what you first gave to us. May these gifts provide ministries of love and compassion to our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you celebrating, we're going to sing our closing hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. each other so that we can celebrate life right now and so that we can celebrate life forever. What brings about that celebration is relationship, love, compassion, and grace. God gives it to us so that we can give it to each other, so that we can all be made whole. Let us celebrate this good gift called friendship, this good gift called life that God has given us as we go now, praising God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.